What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, the other half of Team Earhart is here with you today. I know that I have been MIA on the vlogs, but if you saw the last video that we put out, you know that I have been injured, very busy rehabbing, but I am back and better than ever, and I'm excited to be putting this vlog out for you today. So injuries are an unfortunate but inevitable part of being an athlete. Um, no matter how hard we work to prevent injuries from happening, at some point in our career, they will show up. It is something we are all going to have to deal with at some point or another, so it's good to be equipped for them for when they do come up. Injuries are super frustrating, that goes without saying. Being injured in season is super frustrating and kind of scary. Being injured in season, when you opened up your season with a personal best and you're in the best shape of your life, yeah, this has been really tough. Um, I have faced some really low lows in the past month, um, but I'm just super grateful to be back. This has been such an amazing learning experience and through the course of this injury, I have developed so many strategies that I know will help me when I get injured again in the future. Um, so I'm really happy to share those strategies with you today in hopes that they will be helpful. So today we have seven tips for the injured athlete. Hey, this that East Side Johnny Big Redemption like. No I'm talking about. Hold up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Alright, so the first tip is something that you want to implement as soon as you get injured, and that is believe it is a necessary part of the process. So I know this is difficult because how can a pulled hamstring or a sprained ankle possibly be beneficial in any way, but if you can sit down and force yourself to think of and believe how this could possibly be for the greater good and how this setback might help you long term, it's going to be that much easier to get through this. So this strategy is called being a reverse paranoid. So instead of you know having the belief that the universe is conspiring against you and these bad things happen for no reason at all, you believe that every single thing that happens to you in your life, good or bad, is a necessary part of the process and they're paving the way to where you ultimately want to be. And if you can just trust that, it feels easier to get through the hard times. So for example, when I got hurt, I chose to believe that this was happening because this is a longer season. So the world championships aren't until October. I decided to believe that this injury was occurring um, to prevent me from peaking too soon or to prevent me from being burnt out by the time September rolls around. I adopted the mentality that this injury needed to happen in order for me to be where I need to be at physically um, come late summer and fall. And forcing myself to believe this was actually really helpful because then it's like, okay, well, it's all just part of the plan, I guess. So again, I know this is a difficult one, but if you can just try to have this outlook um, and have that instead of, you know, more of a woe is me outlook, it is really helpful and positivity is huge in getting through injuries and this kind of sets the stage for that. Your happiness is largely determined by the degree to which you feel in control of your life. But that brings us to our second point, which is control the controllable. One of the reasons why injuries are so difficult to get through mentally and emotionally is because they make us feel completely out of control, completely helpless, completely powerless. But the truth is, even when we're not able to train the way that we want to train, there's so many other aspects of life where we can maintain this vital sense of control. Throughout my injury, on the days when I let myself stay up too late or binge eat, or just have a super negative attitude and let my mind go crazy with all these stupid what ifs. Those were the days when I felt the worst and those were the days where I felt like I was never going to get better, which obviously wasn't helping the healing process. But the days when I remained super diligent in all these other areas of my life, that's where I felt like I was seeing the most progress with the injury. So overall, if you can control the controllable, mainly your attitude, the injury is going to be that much easier to get through. Ah, patience. Is there a more annoying word to an athlete? Probably not, but it's still tip number three. So the worst thing you can do when you're injured is be impatient and try to come back before your injury has fully healed itself. This is something that I did not once, not twice, but three times with this back injury. And really, in the end, I just put myself back even more. This is stupid, don't do it. But aside from even just a physical standpoint, from a mental side of things, it is really, really important to stay patient and to keep believing that not right now doesn't necessarily mean never. Your time is coming. And now more than ever is when it's super important to remember that. Tip number four, 
Maintain your confidence. This is a demand, not a recommendation. As an athlete, it can take years and years and years and years for you to establish a strong sense of confidence in your ability to reach your goals. And it is crazy how quickly this can deteriorate once you're hurt. So for this reason, it is really important to establish strategies pretty much from the get-go that'll keep your confidence up so that when your body is healed and you're able to go back into training, your mind is right where it needs to be and your confidence is at an all-time high. So for me, this was a lot of little things like sometimes doing a bike workout in my national team gear or standing in front of the mirror like this, listening to Eminem and repeating to myself that I can do this, I have what it takes vomit on a sweater already mom spaghetti. But for the most part it was journaling every single day about reasons why I can do this and kind of like giving myself proof that I have what it takes. And now that I am back to training I feel even more confident than ever but that's because I took the time to really really work at keeping that confidence up. And I recommend that you do the same. Actually no, I already said I don't recommend it. I demand that you do the same. The power of visualization cannot be undervalued and that is why it is tip number five in getting through an injury. So this one kind of feeds off of number four which was maintaining your confidence. Visualization is an awesome way to maintain your confidence. Every single day of my injury when I was supposed to be at the track for three hours instead I was laying on the couch, laying in the hammock, laying in bed, sitting somewhere and visualizing myself doing what I wanted to be doing. And this wasn't just visualizing myself, you know, jumping 14 meters, breaking the Canadian record, qualifying for the Olympics. This was visualizing myself doing the little things like being able to go for a jog if I wanted to, or going into the shred shed and lifting, or um, being at the track and having a huge practice jump and, you know, my coach's reaction and him saying, oh, I think we should measure that. Like I was visualizing everything because I'm a huge believer in the law of attraction and I wanted to be putting these images out there in hopes that they would manifest into my reality sooner rather than later. So just because you can't actually do what you want to be doing, you can think about it constantly. Um, one of the books that I read throughout my injury said, you become what you think about most of the time. So for me, I want to be a 14 meter triple jumper. I was thinking about that constantly. But first and foremost, I wanted to be healthy and able to train the way that I wanted. So I was thinking about that constantly. I was simply visualizing myself being able to train. And here we are, able to train. 14 meters, coming soon. Tip number five may seem a little bit silly, but it had a huge effect for me. And that is stay off social media. So 95% of the accounts that I follow are track content related. And trust me, when it hurts to simply sit, the last thing you wanna do is see people training, competing, that kind of thing. So by simply logging off of my social media accounts, I eliminated a huge source of stress for me and a huge source of pain for me because it actually did hurt to be able to see people training and competing and essentially doing what I wasn't able to do. Another important thing to keep in mind is that people's social media pages are in large part their highlight reel. So you're sitting there feeling at your worst and seeing someone else at their best and it sucks. But it's important to keep in mind that people aren't always open about their struggles. As much as you feel that you're going through a hard time, they could be going through shit that's even harder than that, but you don't know it. Overall, social media is a danger zone. I would highly recommend staying off of it. Doing this allowed me to completely focus on myself, not other people, not get caught up in what they're doing. And by focusing on myself, it only helped my body heal itself even more. All right, I don't have to tell you guys that there's a lot more to do with being an athlete than actually the physical training aspect of it. So that brings us with our last tip, number seven, improve in other areas. And being injured and having to take that time off is actually a really good time to focus on the other things that you've always wanted to improve, whether that's hydration or your sleeping habits or your nutrition. For me, it was my attitude. I really wanted to focus on bouncing back when something negative happens in my day and not letting it completely take control of my outlook for the rest of the day. And in the course of the four weeks of my injury, I actually feel like I really improved in this area and obviously I am going to reap the rewards of this now that I'm back training. So really try and see your time away from training as an opportunity to improve in other areas. So in the end, when you are able to go back to training, you're gonna be better. All right guys, that is 
that is all for the vlog. I'm just going to run with that because I'm already running late for track. I hope that you guys enjoyed the vlog and that you found it helpful. Um, feel free to leave in the comment section some of your own tips for getting through injury and we could make this video like a resource um, of getting through an injury where people can go to for advice and if there's anything else you want me to elaborate on feel free to let me know. Um, sometimes in these types of videos I tend to say way too much and then Taylor's like oh I have to cut 40 minutes of you talking into 8 minutes say less so yeah I tried to keep it brief but um, if you are watching this and you are injured right now I wish you the best of luck in your recovery process try to adopt at least three of these habits and I promise you it'll make it that much easier so thanks once again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Talk to y'all soon. Bye.